Good afternoon and welcome to Exploration Place here in the Digital Dome Theater and Planetarium. My name is Daniel and today we are going to be talking about a couple of space things. And in just a couple of minutes, we're going to try out SpaceX's docking simulator for the International Space Station. So first off, uh, how many of you were out there watching and saw the launch of our international space uh, to the International Space Station with the crew this weekend? Uh, let's see here. This is what it looked like early Saturday morning at the Cape. Uh, beautiful picture from SpaceX's Flickr site. And here we can see the Falcon 9 with the Dragon loaded on top. This is at the historic launch site of many space shuttle missions and some of our missions to the moon. Uh, very different look to the launch pad for people who, uh, like me, followed up with the shuttle program most of our lives. Uh, seeing the pad a little bit over, it's uh, basically they took out all the shuttle support and then they rebuilt the launch pad for the use with SpaceX. And that space, that launch pad is actually leased out to SpaceX. And so very neat to see some of the pictures and images. Uh, but there, here we can see the morning of launch. And of course, on time, they had a, a, an instantaneous window. And that goes back to the orbital dynamics of getting to space station. They had to launch right on time in order to meet up with the International Space Station about 19 hours later, uh, which happened overnight for most of the folks here in the United States. But if you had a chance to watch, I saw several postings of people that were able to see the International Space Station go overhead. We here in Kansas and Wichita, my family, we were able to see the International Space Station go overhead uh, Saturday evening. And then there were some folks who had great conditions and were actually able to see the space station go overhead, followed by the Dragon capsule uh, reflecting just enough light. We did not see that here at my house. Uh, but I know there were several people who did, uh, friends from across the country who were posting pictures and videos, looked really neat. I have been able to see the space station, uh, let's see, Saturday night, Sunday night, and Monday night. I do not know yet. I have not looked at my app to see if there are any passes for tonight. I think there are, so more than likely I'm going to go for four nights in a row of seeing the International Space Station go overhead. Now, another picture that I thought was really interesting and we'll talk a little bit about is uh, this is uh, an image actually from Spaceflight Insider uh, and it basically takes the Dragon module and uh, breaks it down so you kind of get an idea of where everything's at so they've got what they call the trunk which is uh, very similar to the uh, if you look back at the Apollo missions there was the service module which was attached to the back of the command module uh, this would be very similar to that. Then they have maneuvering thrusters. There's 18 of them around the outside. Uh, these would be very similar to the RCS engines on the space shuttle, the reaction control systems that were for fine motor movements. And then they have the main thrusters. The main thrusters are for powered landing and also it was for the escape system during launch. There's four of those, two on the side we're looking at, two on the other side. Uh, now, uh, I was listening and a little bit different during the first stage of liftoff. Uh, the first stage of liftoff, uh, the whole first stage of the Falcon 9 is actually powered by kerosene with a liquid oxygen for the oxidizer. Uh, so that's a little bit different. It's the R9 engine, I believe. And so that's a little bit different than what we were used to in the shuttle. In the shuttle, we were using liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Uh, them going with kerosene and liquid oxygen. And then once they get into space, the reaction control systems are actually using the same thing that the space shuttles use, excuse me, which was uh, or is monomethyl hydrazine for the fuel and nitrogen tetroxide, which is the oxidizer. And when the two are mixed together, they are a hypergolic fuel, which means they instantaneously ignite and help us to move the dragon around. Now, the cool part about that is you don't need to have any uh, type of an ignition switch or an igniter. And so when those two fuel, the fuel and the oxidizer mix up hypergolically, they just ignite instantaneously. Uh, think baking soda and vinegar. You don't have to do anything. You just mix them together and they react. 
that is the same with these hypergolic fuels. All right, so all of that being said, we had a fantastic launch. They made it to the space station right on time. Uh, there were lots of folks out across the web webosphere watching this. And I have got for us, give me one second to pull it up. Uh, this is a short little one minute, 19 second video that NASA put together about the launch. Uh, in case you have not seen it, it is off of NASA's website, and it's called the Launch Recap. And I'm going to pull that up right now. Wow, well, we're making history again. Let's go. We are one step by one step accomplishing what we need to do as a nation to lead again in space, and it's not just rhetoric. in the world from right here on American soil. What a fantastic day for space flight, for NASA, for SpaceX, and we did have a fantastic launch. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I, I will admit I had my whole family together. We were able to watch it from my six-year-old to my almost 16-year-old to my wife and me sitting in the basement with the big screen. Really enjoyed watching that launch and uh, looking forward to more in the future, taking our American astronauts into space. Now, as I promised, we are going to try out the SpaceX ISS docking simulator. Now, the cool part about the inside of the Dragon is that it is all touchscreen mobility, and that's how they control it. If we look back at uh, this picture, let's see, this is the one right here. We can see in the picture, we can see them with the, the three touch screens in front of them. If you watched any of the launch uh, footage or any of the pre-launch footage, you could see those three screens being utilized quite a bit. They had to redesign the gloves to use a touch screen. A lot of cool stuff there, but this is uh, was put out by SpaceX for all of us to try our hand at docking with the International Space Station. Now, as we're looking at this, I'll show off some of the different things that are on here. And as we look at that, uh, we can see in the middle, there's the big round circle. You've got at the top roll. It's currently at 15 degrees. You needed to get it to zero degrees or within 0.2. Then you have to get your pitch down to 0, .0 uh, which would also be, uh, right now it's at negative 20. So we're gonna have to pitch up quite a bit. And then we're going to have to yaw which is the motion uh, like your car makes when it turns. The yaw motion is right now at negative 10. We are going to want it at zero or within 0.2. Um, we're currently at 202.1 meters away from the International Space Station. And we have uh, the X, Y, Z axis on the left of that circle. Uh, X is how far away from the space station we are, which is about 200 meters. The Y axis and the Z axis are, uh, are indicators of lining up with the crosshairs in the docking hatch, which we can see at the top of the screen on the left. So we are gonna start moving. We're gonna start over here on the right and we're gonna first fix our pit. Or, uh, actually, we're gonna fix our roll first. And so we are going to roll. And remember, we are working in, and I went the wrong way first. So remember, we're working in microgravity and for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So we are going to set and get our roll started. We're now moving and we're going to wait till that number gets down close to zero. Then we're going to click again to try and negate all of that energy that we've started rolling this direction. We're currently rolling to our right and we're going to do roll left in order to stop. Uh, so we're waiting. Uh, we're down at about six degrees. Moving fairly quickly, everything in space takes a little bit of extra time. So if you're trying this out for the first time, don't be afraid for it to take you a few minutes. 
and a little bit of practice, uh, I have still not mastered this and I'm not successful every time. So we will see how I do here. Um, should be at stop. I am, okay, so we are at negative 0.2 degrees, uh, which is gonna work out just fine. Now we need to work on our pitch. So we are gonna pitch up. So I've clicked four times, five times, and now I'm going to, when we get to where we wanna go, I'm gonna click five more times. If I want this to go a little bit faster, I can go six, seven, and then I just go down here to the bottom, pitch down, and I wait until we get close to zero. And I'll put seven clicks in to stop us for an opposite and equal reaction. Getting closer. One, two, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. And it looks like we're overcompensating, but we're good. And then we're at three, and now we're at one, and I need to go five, and we have stopped at zero degrees. Perfect. Could not have hit that any more perfectly. All right, this might be my time. I might have a good docking here. Now, the next thing that we're going to fix is our position. We need to change our yaw. And so we're going to be using the side. We're going to yaw left. Uh, so we're going to put in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten clicks. Just because it'll make us go faster. I'm going to take five off. Overshot it by just a bit. Okay, we're really close. We're at point zero point two. Now we're just going to start moving ourselves in. Uh, let's see here. We're going to get our y-axis next. Ten clicks of yaw of uh, y-axis. So we're just rotating. That you can see is lining us up. So we're gonna move just a little bit back to the right. I overshot us by just a bit. And now we should be good. And now we're gonna go down. And we are going down 10. When we get a little closer, we'll see that that crosshair starts to line up with the green diamond. And that means that we are lined up and then we can start our approach. We are getting closer. We are closing in. On being lined up. Now, once we get lined up, we're doing all of these big maneuvers way outside of the space station. So we're not right up next to it, firing all our thrusters. We're going to get lined up and then we're going to make a nice, gentle approach. So we are now going to translate forward, put in five clicks, four or five more clicks, and now we are closing the distance at about uh, 0.5 meters per second. So we can go up, we're at 10 right now, let's go up another five to 10, four or five, one, two, three, four, five, and now we are moving at somewhere in the neighborhood of about 0.9 meters per second. And that'll help us close the distance pretty quickly. We need to adjust our y-axis just a bit. And it looks like we're good there. And all of our numbers, as you can see, are all in green. We have a 0.2 on roll, a 0.2 on yaw. We have a 0.1 on y, 0 0.0 on z or Z, and our pitch is perfect at zero. So we are lined up, and if we can uh, slow ourselves down once we get up close, we should be in the money for a good move. 
Now, if you are trying this for the very first time, like I said earlier, you work on one movement at a time, kind of like what I've done today. That one movement at a time does help you to, to not lose track of your motion. And so as I get closer, I'm doing these small little micro moves uh, to my yaw or my Y axis, uh, just to make sure that I stay on line with the docking hatch. We are now at 94, well, about 90 meters in closing. Um, I've got about 20 clicks of forward translation. And so when we get closer, I'm gonna start taking those off. And if I keep track of how many times I've clicked, I should be able to take the same number off and be at a full stop. So here we go. We are getting closer and closer. We're to within 70 meters now. Here we come, all right. Okay, we are down to 40 meters. You can start to see some great detail in this model that NASA has put out there of the International Space Station on the SpaceX site. Um, if you see those little things that look like nuclear symbols, those are actually uh, those are points where the uh, docking arm, uh, they're grapple points, so that the Canadian robotic arm could actually grab onto those pieces as they were putting them in place. And now I'm slowing our roll, uh, slowing us down just a little bit as we get closer. Now we're at a very nice slow pace. We're gonna move in very slowly for this last nine meters or so. And as you can see, we are getting close. I'm gonna do a couple of translations just to get us right on track. All of our numbers are green. Getting closer, all right, here we go. I had to concentrate there for just a second. I was trying to do two things at once. That didn't work out so well. So here we are, we are about to dock up. We are at th three meters away. I'm gonna take away just a little bit more of our energy. Oh, let's see what happened. Oh, we failed. I was going too fast once again. I was supposed to be below 0.2 and it said that my rate was below 0.2 or below negative 0.2. So my docking was unsuccessful, uh, trying to get in there a little bit too quick. So once again, folks, go out, try this out. The website is iss-sim. Dot spacex .com. If you type in ISS docking SpaceX, you'll find it no problem. But I do suggest that you try this out. It is a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, having a lot of fun trying this myself. I have practiced many different times. Here you can actually see uh, the website right here. Uh, it's actually all laid out for you right there. So ISS hyphen sim dot, or, yeah, dot spacex .com. Other than that, I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. This is a great week in space history, seeing the first commercial launch with an American crew on board and launching again from here in the United States. If you have questions or comments, please check us out. Check out our Facebook page. We have lots of cool stuff going on here at Exploration Place, and we are going to continue to have a lot of fun uh, in the coming days. We are opening February, or I'm sorry, July July 1st to our members and July 4th to the general public. 
uh, we ask you to come back and check us out. Uh, we will have the dome open uh, with limited seating available, and we are going to have a lot of fun. We have a couple of great other opportunities, so keep an eye on our website. Keep an eye on our Facebook page for more announcements coming soon. Other than that, I hope you've had a great week. Try out that docking sim, and we will see you soon. Thank you very much. Have a great day.